is a stochastic processes module 7 brownian motion and its applications this is lecture 3 stochastic differential equations in the lecture 1 we have discussed the brownian motion definition and its uh, properties and in the lecture 2 we have discussed a process derived from uh, brownian motion in particular we have discussed the geometric brownian motion and then the levy process and few applications also in this lecture we are going to discuss a stochastic differential equations we are going to start with the motivation behind the stochastic differential equation then we are going to discuss the variations of a real valued functions followed by the brownian motions then we are going to give the definition of a stochastic differential equation then we are going to discuss the strong and weak solutions and also we are going to discuss the existence and uniqueness of solution the motivation behind the stochastic differential equation when in the 19th century the german mathematician Weierstrass strauss constructed a real valued function which is continuous but nowhere differentiable this was considered as a nothing else but a mathematical curiosity high frequency data show that prices of exchange rates interest rates and the liquid assets are practically continuous but they are of a unbounded variation in every given time interval in particular they are nowhere differentiable the classical calculus is no longer applicable for real valued functions occurring in mathematical finance therefore the classical calculus requires an extension to functions of unbounded variation stochastic calculus is a necessary extension of a real analysis to cope up with the functions of unbounded variation the brownian motion which is a stochastic process is uh, the sample path is uh, continuous but the sample path is uh, nowhere differentiable and also it is a uh, unbounded variation some important concepts of the stochastic calculus stochastic differential equations eto integral and eto's formula will be discussed in this module eto integral is nothing but stochastic integral equations and also we are going to discuss the eto formula to solve the stochastic integral equation or stochastic differential equations so in this model we are going to discuss the stochastic differential equations in the next lecture we are going to discuss the stochastic integral equations and in the lecture 5 we are going to discuss the eto formulas and uh, some important uh, stochastic differential equations and their solutions first we are going to discuss the variations of real valued function our interest is to study the variation of a brownian motion but before that we will discuss uh, the variation of real valued function then followed by that we are going to discuss the variations of brownian motion the first variation is defined as follows consider the real valued right continuous functions g on the time interval a to b the value of g at the time t is denoted by g of t let pi be the set of all finite subdivisions pi of the interval a to b 
with 0 equal to t naught which is less than t1 which is less than and so on which is less than tn where tn is equal to small b. Define the norm of pi that is a maximum of i the length of the interval that is t i plus 1 minus t a. The variation or the first variation the first order variation of g of t over the interval a to b is defined as the variation of g in the interval or over the interval a to b is nothing but supremum of a pi belonging to pi the summation running from i 0 to n minus 1 the absolute of g of t plus i t plus t of i plus 1 minus g of t i. So, the modulus of this difference of the value evaluated at t i plus 1 and t i the difference of the function g take absolute then find the summation then find the supremum that will be call it as a variation of a g of t. The function g t is of a finite variation if for every t if v g of t that is nothing but the v g of between the interval 0 to t is a finite. Whenever the interval 0 to t the first variation of the function g is a finite one then we say the function g t is a finite variation for every t. For all t if v g of t is bounded by a constant k which is independent of t then we say the function g of t is of bounded variation. This is for the first order variation for the any real value function g. Alternatively a function g is said to have a bounded variation of an closed interval its total variation is finite. The same way we are going to define the p variation or p th order variation of real valued function. The same interval 0 to t that is nothing but the only difference is absolute power. So, if p is equal to 1 then it is a first order variation, if it is p is equal to 2 then it is second order variation and so on. Remark. In case g is a continuous function then v g of t can be alternatively expressed as a v j of t is a limit norm pi tends to 0 summation i is equal to 0 to n minus 1 absolute of g of t plus t of i plus 1 minus a g of t i where uh, here pi is a arbitrary partition of the interval 0 to capital T and the norm pi is a maximum of a t k plus 1 minus t k where k is lies between 0 to n minus 1. In a similar way the p variation can be expressed as written here the v j of a p variation of t that is written as a limit norm pi tends to 0 the similar expression the absolute power p. If g is a continuous function then supreme is replaced by limit. Later on this video lecture you will see how to calculate the second order variation which is known as the quadratic variation for Brownian motion. In finding the quadratic variation of a Brownian motion g of t will be replaced by w of t and the limit will be taken in the sense of limit of sequence of random variables. Now we have uh, this theorem if g is continuously differentiable function from the interval 0 to capital T then the first order variation is integral of a modulus of a g dash of t with the limits 0 to capital T. 
and second order variation is 0. Now we present the important result on p variation without proof as a theorem. Theorem 1 let, let the p variation of the function g of t in the interval 0 to capital T where t is a positive real number denoted by v suffix g superscript p of t if uh, the p -th order variation is a uh, finite then all the earlier order variation is going to be infinite and all the further order qth order variation from the p that will be 0. Whenever the p -th order variation is a finite then all the earlier order variation from the p -th order p that will be infinity that means it is unbounded and for uh, variation of uh, qth order will be 0 where q is uh, where p is less than q. So, this is a very important result and using this result uh, we are going to discuss the variations of uh, Brownian motion also. Examples for these can be found in the problem sheet. As an example to understand the application of the previous theorem and the results we have these consider the function g of t that is t square it's a polynomial of order 2. So, you can find the derivative and you can find the derivative absolute uh, whole square therefore, if you find a limit pi tends to 0 of uh, pi times this one is equal to 0 therefore, you will get uh, the first order variation is 1 and the second order variation will be 0 in the interval 0 to 1 or at the time at the t equal to 1. By applying theorem 1 we get uh, whenever p is equal to 1 it is a uh, value is 1 and for all the further order that will be 0. This is for the function which is a which is a polynomial of degree 2. Therefore, you are getting p is equal to 1 the first order variation is equal to 1 and the further orders the second, third, fourth and so on the variation will be 0 for the second order degree polynomial. Now, we are going to discuss the first variation of Brownian motion. We have already shown that the sample path of WT are nowhere differential. Therefore, the first order variation does not make sense because of the above reason because the derivative it is nowhere differentiable therefore, you cannot get the first order variation. Hence, the first order variation of the Brownian motion does not exist. Now, we are moving into the quadratic variation of Brownian motion. The quadratic variation of Brownian motion over the interval 0 to t where t is a positive real number denoted by the notation w t comma w t of t that is given by v suffix t. So, it is a wrong notation. It is a v suffix w t superscript 2 of t that is nothing but limit uh, pi tends to 0 of q pi where q pi is defined summation i is equal to 0 to n minus 1 the difference of w's at the time point uh, t i to t i plus 1 the whole square. Clearly because you are making a difference of uh, w's so, the q pi is a function of a sample points of w belonging to omega and also hence the quadratic variation calculated for the Brownian motion for each is in itself a random variable because uh, this is a random variable the difference is a random variable the summation will be a sum of random variables is a random variable 
therefore the q pi is a random variable and you are finding limit uh, pi tends to norm of pi tends to 0 of q pi that is nothing but note that this limit is taken over all partition of 0 to pi with the norm of pi tends to 0 as n tends to 0 as n tends to infinity norm of pi is defined as the maximum of i of uh, the length of the interval t i plus 1 minus t i therefore norm of pi tends to 0 means uh, you are finding the limit is taken over all partitions of 0 to pi 0 to t so we have to find out what is the limit norm pi tends to 0 of uh, this random variable for every n this will be a random variable so you have to find out the limit taken over all partitions of 0 to t with the norm of pi tends to 0 as n tends to infinity since for each pi for each partition pi the q pi is a random variable how to find the limiting distribution of q pi for a large n the question would be what is the proper mode of convergence in these random variables we shall use the convergence in mean square that is a convergence in L2 to find the limit of a norm pi tends to 0 q of pi as a n tends to infinity. So, for that we are going to dis we are going to define the convergence in L2. Let a pi n let a x of n n equal n is greater than or equal to 1 and x be a random variables defined on a common probability space omega f p we say that x n converges convergence in l2 to the random variable x if limit n tends to infinity expectation of the absolute of x n minus x whole square is equal to 0 so if this condition is satisfied and this is a sequence of random variable and this is a random variable both are defined in the same probability space omega f p then we say the sequence x n convergence to the random variable x in L2. So this the same approach we are going to use to find out the limiting distribution of the random variables q of pi for a large n or n as n tends to infinity. In this case of a Brownian motion, we, we will show that the limit norm pi tends to 0 expectation of a absolute of a pi q2 sorry uh, q pi minus t whole square is equal to 0. That means uh, the sequence of random variable q of pi as n tends to infinity converges to the random variable which is a constant to capital T in L2 if this condition is since this condition is satisfied. When the above results hold good we say that the quadratic variation accumulates accumulated by the Brownian motion over the interval 0 comma capital T is capital T in mean square and is it is denoted w of w of the interval 0 to capital T that is capital T. So to prove the sequence of random variable uh, q pi converges to the random variable t as n tends to infinity in uh, L2 we prove it in uh, three stages the first stage we will find out we will prove that expectation of uh, q of pi is equal to capital T then we will prove the variance of uh, q of pi that is less than or equal to 2 times norm of pi of t therefore 
you can prove the final result expectation of a q pi minus t whole square that is nothing but a variance of q pi because the expectation of a q pi is t therefore expectation of q pi minus t whole square is variance of q pi so as n tends to infinity the q pi will converge to the random variable t in l2 the proof has as follows first we will find out the expectation of a q pi that is nothing but the summation of i is equal to 0 to n minus 1 expectation of w of t i plus 1 minus w of t i the whole square since for fixed i the difference of the w's are w's is a normally distributed random variable with the mean 0 and the variance is nothing but the length of the interval therefore the expectation of the difference of random variable whole square is nothing but the variance therefore for fixed i that is nothing but the t of i plus 1 minus t i the summation is varies from i is equal to 0 to n minus 1 therefore you will get capital t so the first part is uh, proved uh, that is expectation of q pi is equal to t now we will find out the variance of q pi that is less than or equal to we have to prove the second part variance of q pi is less than or equal to 2 times norm of pi multiplied by t third part is quite easy so the variance of q pi is nothing but uh, summation i is equal to 0 to n minus 1 variance of uh, the difference of random variable whole square but variance of difference of the random variable whole square that is nothing but the expectation of difference of random variable whole power 4 minus 2 times expectation of the difference of the random variable whole square multiplied by t i plus 1 minus t i plus uh, t i plus 1 minus t i whole square for fixed i using the fourth order moment of normally distributed random variable with the mean 0 and the variance at t i plus 1 minus t minus 1 the first term in the right hand side the first term in the right hand side expectation of a difference of the random variable power 4 that is the fourth order moment about the the fourth order moment uh, that is nothing but uh, 3 times uh, t i plus 1 minus t i whole square therefore the right hand side variance of uh, the difference of the random variable whole square that is nothing but 3 times the difference the time difference whole square minus 2 times the time difference whole square plus uh, the plus uh, time difference whole square so therefore this is nothing but uh, 2 times uh, time difference whole square the 2 times uh, time difference whole square is nothing but that is less than or equal to 2 times norm of pi multiplied by the time difference therefore the variance of uh, q pi is uh, less than or equal to 2 times norm of pi times t therefore since you know that the expectation of q pi is equal to t therefore uh, expectation of norm of q pi minus t whole square that is nothing but variance of q pi therefore the second order variation of the brownian motion w t between the over the interval 0 to capital t is nothing but limit uh, norm of pi tends to 0 q pi that is same as t since uh, limit uh, norm pi tends to 0 the expectation of q pi minus t whole square is equal to 0 so the conclusion is uh, the second order or the quadratic variation of a brownian motion is capital t 
between the interval 0 to capital T. This means it accumulates a unit quadratic variation per unit time. Also for 0 less than T1 less than T2 the quadratic variation till T2 the quadratic variation sorry the quadratic variation till T2 minus quadratic variation till T1 that is same as T2 minus T1 that is the Brownian motion accumulates T2 minus T1 units of quadratic variation over the interval T1 to T2. Since this is true for every interval we refer that the Brownian motion accumulates quadratic variation at the rate 1 per unit time. This last statement we write informally as a dwt dwt is equal to dt and this dt is in fact 1 times dt. In other words the above phenomena can be represented in a differential form as a differential of wt multiplied with the differential of wt this is a quadratic variation that is nothing but uh, the differential of t that is the meaning of uh, it, the Brownian motion accumulates a unit quadratic variation per unit time. Now we are applying the same theorem which we discussed for the variations of uh, real valued function we have uh, the pth order variance of a uh, Brownian motion between the interval uh, 0 to capital T that value will be does not exist for the first order variation therefore p is equal to 1 it is infinity for the quadratic variation it is uh, capital T it is a bounded uh, variation bounded uh, quadratic variation whereas uh, the first order is a uh, unbounded variation for p greater than 2 it is 0. So the example we have taken is g of t is equal to t square for that uh, the first order variance is uh, finite and the further variations are 0 whereas for the Brownian motion the first order variation is a uh, infinity that is unbounded variation and the second order variation is a finite value that is capital T and the further variations are 0. This concludes that the Brownian motion is of unbounded variation because of p equal to 1 the variation is infinity and a finite quadratic variation because p is equal to 2 the value will be capital T for every now we are moving into the stochastic differential equations. Introduce uncertainties by introducing as additive white noise term that is a dxt is equal to b of t comma xt dt plus dwt where b is a real valued continuous function from 0 comma t cross r. The term dwt is called a as a white noise and its integral is a Brownian motion wt. Here the above equation is also known as stochastic differential equation or SDE the meaning of which would be more clear after the introduction of a stochastic integral concept. Note that x of t is a stochastic processes, stochastic process the integral form of the differential equation is a x of stochastic differential equation is x of t is equal to x of 0 plus integration 0 to t of b of s of x of s ds plus wt is a stochastic integral equation. In general if b 
and sigma are the two suitable functions, then the integral equation of the form x of t is equal to x of 0 plus uh, integration 0 to t function b integration with respect to s plus uh, 0 to t sigma s of x of s uh, dw s. In the equation 2, the first equation first integral is uh, different from the second integral. The second integral is a integration with respect to the Brownian motion sample path W s. This integral equation is defined by the integration of stochastic process with respect to the Brownian motion. So, the equation 2 that is nothing but this equation. Equation 2 can be written as dxt is equal to b of t comma xt dt plus sigma t of xt dwt where t is lies between 0 to capital T where b and sigma are two given functions. This the equation 3 is referred to as a stochastic differential equation. The interpretation of equation 3 tells us that the change that is d of x t that is nothing but the x of t plus delta t minus x t is caused by a change d t of time with the factor b of t comma x t in combination with the change d w t that is nothing but w of t plus delta t minus w t of Brownian motion with the factor sigma of t comma x t. The Brownian motion is adapted to the natural filtration. So, the unknown is in the sigma as well as b and the increment of Brownian motion therefore, this equation is called stochastic differential equation. Now, we are going to discuss the there are two types of uh, solutions for the stochastic differential equation. The first type is called uh, strong solution, the second type is called weak solution. So, we are going to discuss uh, the strong solution first. Let us uh, sigma, sorry, let omega f p be the probability space and uh, w t be a Brownian motion defined on it. The adopted process x of t satisfying the equation 2 that is a stochastic differential equation is said to be a strong solution uniquely if uh, x of t and w t are the two solutions on the same probability space satisfying the stochastic differential equation 2 then the probability of x of t is equal to y of t for all t that will be 1. then uh, x t is called a strong solution and it is also a unique solution. That means, uh, if you have a, another solution y of t, then probability of x of t is equal to y of t for all t will be 1. In general, a strong solution is an explicit function f such that x of t is a function of t comma w s where s is less than t one can write the solution in an explicit function f of a t with the Brownian motion. Then this solution is called a strong solution. Now we are going to discuss what is the weak solution of stochastic differential equation. Weak solution both strong and weak solutions require the existence of the process x t that solve the integral, equ integral equation version of the s d. The difference between the two lies in the underlying probability space. A weak solution consists of a probability space and the process that satisfies the integral equation, while a strong solution is the process that satisfies the equation and is defined on a given probability space. When no explicit solution exists for a given S d, then we can approximate it by the numerical solution replacing differentials by differences. 
hence approximate solution method is similar to the numerical integration. So with this uh, we have discussed uh, the strong solution and uh, weak solutions of uh, stochastic differential equations. This course we are interested to find the strong solution not the weak solution. When the above results hold good, we say that the quadratic variation accumulates accumulated by the Brownian motion over the interval 0 comma capital T is capital T in mean square and is equation 2 can be written as d x t is equal to b of t comma x t d t plus sigma t of x t d w t where t is lies between 0 to capital T where b and sigma are two given functions. Now, we discuss uh, simple examples for the stochastic differential equation consider the stochastic differential equation d x t is equal to x t d w t with the x of 0 is equal to 1. Here b of t comma x is equal to 0 and sigma of t comma x is equal to x. You can verify the Lipschitz condition for this uh, b is equal to 0 and sigma is equal to x hence the strong solution exists. Obtaining the strong solution will be explained in the further lectures. We will see one more example for the stochastic differential equation. Here s of t be the stock price at time t and the corresponding stochastic differential equation for this example is a d of s t is equal to mu times s of t d t plus sigma s of t d w t with s of 0 is known. Here mu is a constant growth rate of the stock and sigma is the volatility. When you compare with the standard stochastic differential equation we get a b of t comma x is equal to mu of x and sigma of t comma x is same as sigma x. Since mu and sigma are constants, the Lipschitz condition is satisfied. Hence, the strong solution exists. And this example also, how to find the solution that will be discussed in the further lectures. Now, we are going to discuss the existence and the uniqueness solution that is basically a strong solution. Now, we discuss the existence of strong solution. Suppose b is a continuous function, similarly sigma is a continuous function satisfying the Lipschitz condition the absolute of uh, difference of b of t comma x minus b of t comma y plus in the absolute sigma t, t comma x minus sigma of t comma y if this summation is less than k times absolute of x minus y where k is a positive constant and also the initial distribution x0 and wt are independent random variables then we can say the solution is going to exist that that will be unique also. So, whenever the Lipschitz conditions satisfied with the two continuous function b and uh, sigma for a positive constant uh, k 
along with x of 0 and w of t are a independent random variables. If, bo if both the conditions are satisfied by any stochastic differential equations, then we can conclude it has the unique and uh, it has a un it, it has the existence of a strong solution as well as it will be unique. This is similar to the existence and uniqueness solution of a OD. The only difference is uh, it does not have the term and the sigma term. So it has only the first term which is less than k times absolute of x minus y that is a Lipschitz condition for OD. So here also the same thing along with uh, the continuous function sigma. If this condition is satisfied along with this condition x0 and wt are independent random variables then the given SDE has a unique solution, uh, have the existence of a strong solution and that will be unique. Note that the existence and the uniqueness follow very closely the standard Picard's method for constructing solutions of OD. You know the Picard iteration for a OD ordinary differential equation and this iteration is called a Eto Picard iteration. So using Eto Picard iteration x0 is equal to x0 we get for n is equal to 1 to 3 x n plus 1 of t will be x0 plus the integration plus the another integration. That means uh, with the initial uh, value x0 you can find for n is equal to 1 you can find for, for n is equal to 0 you will find x1 of t first using x0 then for n is equal to 1 you will get x of 2 x of x2 of t and recursively you can get the xn plus 1 of t for every n as n tends to infinity you can get the x of t. So remark that the itera iterations are well defined because uh, it satisfies the Lipschitz conditions as well as uh, x0 and wt are uh, independent random variables. The solution is going to be exist as well as it, it will be unique and uh, these uh, iterations are well defined. By the convergence of iteration scheme, we finally obtain x of t is the limit n tends to infinity x n of t. For every n, it is a random variable. So, this random variable converges to the random variable x of t. So, this we are showing through the Eto Picard iteration. And this Eto Picard iteration is similar to the Picard iteration of a ordinary differential equation. Now we discuss uh, simple examples uh, for the stochastic differential equation. Consider the stochastic differential equation dxt is equal to xt dwt with uh, x of 0 is equal to 1. Here b of t comma x is equal to 0 and sigma of t comma x is equal to x. You can verify the Lipschitz condition for this b is equal to 0 and sigma is equal to x. Hence, the strong solution exists. Obtaining the strong solution will be explained in the further lectures. We will see one more example for the stochastic differential equation. Here s of t be the stock price at time t and the corresponding stochastic differential equation for this example is a d of s t is equal to mu times s of t dt plus sigma s of t dwt with s of 0 is known. Here mu is a constant growth rate of the stock 
and sigma is the volatility. When you compare with the standard stochastic differential equation, we get b of t comma x is equal to mu of x and sigma of t comma x is same as sigma x. Since mu and sigma are constants, the Lipschitz condition is satisfied. Hence, the strong solution exists and this example also how to find the solution that will be discussed in the further lectures. Here is the list of books for the reference. In this lecture, we have discussed a stochastic differential uh, equation. For that, we have discussed the, the variations of a real valued function starting with the first order variation, pth order variation. Then followed by that, we have discussed uh, the variations of uh, Brownian motion starting with the first order variation, quadratic variation and uh, pth order variation also. Then we have discussed the stochastic differential equation by adding a white noise term in the ordinary differential equation. Then we have discussed the equivalent stochastic integral equations. And also we have discussed the strong and weak solutions. And finally, we have a given existence of a existence as well as a uniqueness of a strong solution. And finally, we have discussed uh, Eto-Picard alteration methods. Mm -hmm.